ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him, and we seek His help and aid. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to protect us from the evils of ourselves and from the sins that we commit. Whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide. And whoever He causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is a misguidance, and every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. We ask Allah to protect us from the fire of hell. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. <clears throat> my brothers and my sisters, today is the 13th of Rabiul Awwal, the third month of the Islamic calendar. Both the birth and the death of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are reported to have taken place in this month, the month of Rabiul Awwal. Inshallah today, I intend to remind myself and to remind you about some of the noble attributes of the greatest of all souls ever to be born, the most influential human being to set foot on earth till the end of times. The uniqueness of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he was not only a great person during his time, but he is great for all times for all people of any race, color, nationality, or geographical location. His example was good for the seventh century Arabs, as it is good for humanity living today, now, in this century, as well as those to come in the future until the end of time. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an excellent example for rich and poor, for young and old, for rulers and for those being ruled, for the intelligent as well as the common man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as his prophet for all of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Sabah, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And he be have sent you to all people to be a bearer of good news as well as a warner. But most people do not know. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
was the first to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was the first to stay away from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he practiced whatever he preached. He followed and lived the Quran at every moment in every detail of his life. His life was the reflection of Allah's words. In fact, when the Prophet's wife Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the conduct and about the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she replied, Kana khulukuhu al-Qur'an, that his character was the Qur'an. Addressing his beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qalam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And you are surely on an exalted standard of character. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was guided by revelation in his personal life, his character and social interactions became prime examples of moral conduct for Muslims to follow and to emulate him until the last day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to follow his model. Allah says, لَقَدَ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا That the Messenger of Allah, in the Messenger of Allah, is an excellent model for those of you who put your hope and your trust in Allah on the last day and who remember Allah very often. What are some of the attributes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The morality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not restricted to just a few moral attributes, but included diverse traits and aspects of life. He was not only kind, compassionate, caring, generous, and humble, but he was also strong, brave, eloquent, wise, and insightful. He was a great planner, a great organizer, a great thinker, yet he was also a man of faith, trust, and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was fully involved and active with his family and his community, but he did not neglect any of his prayers, any of his fasting, and his devotion to Allah. Actually, he prayed so much that no one prayed like him. He, pray, he prayed at night until his feet were swollen. The Prophet وسلم, was exemplary as a teacher, as a preacher, as an imam, as a leader, as a statesman, as a judge, as a commander of the armies, as well as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a businessman, as a neighbor, and as a friend. Before he received the honor of prophethood, he was known among the people of Mecca as As-Sadiq Al-Amin, the most honest and trustworthy person. He kept this character throughout his life. He never broke a pledge or a promise. Even his enemies could not accuse him of being dishonest. He was the most humble person. He used to mingle with the poor and sit among them. 
He stopped people from, sta from standing up for him. That if people were, he was approaching and people wanted to stand to welcome him, he stopped people from doing that. And he used to sit wherever there was a spot available in an assembly. And he never sought a prominent or elevated place. The newcomers who came to Islam or who was looking for the prophet, Sometimes they were not able to recognize or able to distinguish him from his companions. That was the, the, the humbleness of the Prophet wasallam, that he was among his companions, sitting among them as if they were all on the same level and all together, that even a newcomer that comes and want to meet with the Prophet, they, they couldn't distinguish who was the Prophet. And when he entered the city of Mecca, what is known as the conquest of Mecca, Fath Mecca, and when he was leading a huge army, he entered Mecca in the most humble manner, forgiving everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us in the character of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the model of a merciful person. He was merciful to his family, to his followers, his companions, his friends, and even to his enemies. He was merciful to the young and the old, to humans and even to the animals. He treated everyone with kindness and respect. Those who persecuted him in Mecca and killed his relatives and his followers and his companions were forgiven by him at Fath Mecca. At the conquest of Mecca, everyone was forgiven. Showing mercy and forgiving others can only be the attributes of the very strong. Referring to the Prophet's universal, all-embracing mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to all the worlds. My brothers and my sisters, praising the Prophet's attribute of mercy in Surah At Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَوْفُ الرَّحِيمُ That a messenger has come to you from among yourselves. Your suffering distresses him. He is deeply concerned for you and full of kindness and mercy towards the believers. <clears throat> Constancy and consistency were very important aspects of the Prophet's moral behavior. Once he established something good, a good way, or a practice, he used to follow it and adhere to it always. He used to say, the most beloved deed to Allah is the one that is performed regularly, even if it was little. And we find that throughout his 23 years of his mission, throughout the 23 years of his mission, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sought the way of spiritual freedom and liberation. He received the revelation step by step in the midst of the circumstances of life. As if the Most High Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was conversing with him in history for eternity. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listened to him, spoke to him, and contemplated his signs day and night. He prayed while the world of humans were asleep, and he turned to Allah in supplication while others lost hope. He remained patient and steadfast in the face of adversity. His deep spirituality had freed him from the prison of the self. Freed from his own self, he neglected no one. His presence was a refuge. He loved, he forgave. Every day he begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive his own shortcomings and his own failings. When a man or a woman came to him burdened with a mistake, however serious, he received that person and showed him or her the way to forgiveness, to Allah's gentle protection. He covered other people's mistakes from the sight of others while teaching everyone the need for personal rigor and discipline. He was able to express love and spread it around him. His wives were gratified by his presence, tenderness and affection, and his companions loved him intensely. He gave and offered his presence his smiles, his very being, and he had listened to women in his society who often experienced denial of their rights, exclusion, and ill treatment. In the light of spiritual teachings, he guided them to assert themselves, to express themselves, and claim the real freedom of heart and conscience. The Prophet ﷺ loved children with their innocence and gentleness. He kissed them, carried them on his shoulders, and played with them, reaching toward their innocence. Everybody loved, cherished, and respected the Prophet ﷺ because his demanding personality enabled him to transcend his ego and give himself. The Prophet ﷺ carried a universal message, both in experience of love present throughout his life and in his reminders to people of the need to adhere to a universal ethics that transcends divisions, affiliations, and rigid identities. He was the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and an example among humans. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to follow his example. Ameen. My brothers and my sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu advocated and demonstrated that injustice is a, in, that justice is a condition for peace, that there should be no injustice in the society. Justice is a condition for peace. And he kept insisting that one cannot experience the taste of equity if one is unable to respect the dignity of others. The Prophet وسلم, he set slaves free and recommended that Muslims pledge to do so constantly. The community based on Iman had to be a community of free people. Revelation showed him the way he never ceased to give particular attention to slaves, to the poor, 
and to the lowly in society. He invited them to assert their dignity, to demand their rights, and to get rid of any feeling of inferiority. The message was a call for religious, social, and political liberation. In the presence of God, in the presence of Allah, nothing could justify discrimination, social injustice, or racism. Anyone who study the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, regardless of their religious belief, can derive teachings from his seerah. The Prophet Sallallahu came to humankind, to humanity with a message of Iman, faith, ethics, and hope in which this Supreme Being reminds all people of His presence, His requirements, and the final day of return and accountability. The Prophet ﷺ was not trying to impose any religious orthodoxy. He was not much interested in metaphysics, but he was all he was doing was to change people's hearts and minds. He called the prevailing spirit of time Jahiliya, understood as the time of ignorance that is the pre-Islamic period in Arabia. But as recent research shows, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used the term jahiliya to refer to a historical era, but he, he used the term jahiliya to refer not to a historical era, but to a state of mind that caused the violence and terror in the 7th century Arabia. At the close of his mission in the plain of Arafah, at the foot of Jabal al-Rahma, the Mount of Mercy, men and women of all races, all cultures, all colors, rich and poor, were present and listened to his message, which stressed that the best among you is the best towards people. That was his message. The best among you is the best towards people. When we claim to love someone, we need to learn more about that person. And this is especially true about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ibadah. It's a part of our iman, our belief. In a well-known hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <clears throat> La yu'minu ahadukum hatta that none of you will attain true faith, true iman, until you love me, that is the, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, more than your parents, more than your children, and more than the entire, the whole world. What does it mean? <clears throat> It means that you are willing to give up your desires to follow the example and to follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means preferring him over everyone and everything else. In fact, Surah Al Imran makes Following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a condition for following for loving Allah. Verse number 31 in Surah Al Imran makes following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a condition for loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah told us, Kul 
In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni. Yuhbibukum Allah wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. Wallahu ghafurur rahim. That say, say to them, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if you love Allah, follow me. And Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. <clears throat> and Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. The invocation of blessing upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so central for Muslims that it might said to be the only act that is performed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels, and the human beings. For, uh, for as the Quran says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima That indeed Allah and his angels send blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O you who believe, invoke blessings on him. Send blessings on him and invoke peace upon him in a worthy manner. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. So my brothers and my sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than we love our families and more than we love our own selves. Ya Allah, <clears throat> we ask you to protect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to make the, the Prophet the model for our lives. Ya Allah, we ask you to make the Prophet the model for our lives and help us to emulate him in all aspects of our lives. Help us to follow him and to pattern our, our lives with him. Ya Allah, help us to live as Muslims and to die as Muslims and to resurrect us as Muslims next to your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and grant us company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannatul Firdaus in Firdausul A'la. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al jannata wa ma karraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al nari wa ma karraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. ونسألك الخير ما سألك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقرب إلى حبك يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين